Hey guys, this is Jasu. Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy Tactics for Job Fiesta Edition. Uh, so yeah, I did a little bit of stuff off camera. Basically, I passed passed through Mandalia Plain, safe scum to avoid the random battle, and I went to Igros to buy some equipment for beef. So he's he's got all the equipment he needs now. He's got his bow gun and shield. I had to sell off some stuff to get it. Actually, I sold all those useless long swords, or not not all of them. I gave the extras to Delita and Argath. Um, I also equipped Sirloin with a mithril knife, which I forgot to buy last time. Yeah, that, yeah, that money I wasted on those long swords is actually a pretty big hit. I could have used that money on like an extra pair of battle boots. Battle boots are so so huge uh, for this point in the game, or even just in general. Battle battle boots are like an amazing accessory. I think I think the game undervalues just how good. Or yeah, in case that wasn't clear, uh, Battle Boots move plus one. Basically lets you move an extra square on your turn, which is massively beneficial. I actually like Battle Boots better than like a lot of the accessories you get later on that'll increase like your strength and magic and stuff. At least for some character classes. Anyways, uh, I promised you guys that we were going to get into skills. Oh yeah, and I switched uh, Beef to an Archer as well, off camera, because that's this is, this is where he is for the rest of the game, so... So yeah, this is- oh yeah, and uh, we're gonna remove JP boost off of him too, because now that beef is where he needs to be as an archer. Uh, the, he can only use archer skills from here on out. And what are the archer skills? Uh, basically, there are four types of skills in the game, You've and you've got a uh, skill slot for each of them. You can see that one up the on the top is uh, basically your class abilities. And that, that's like basically whatever job, yeah, whatever job you're in, you have that one equipped regardless. So no matter what, if you're an archer, you've got aim. And then you can actually assign another one here to use the active abilities from another class as well. Or I think, what do they call these? I think they're called action abilities. Yeah, you got your action abilities, which are basically just your spells and skills that you can use in battle. Uh, you've got reaction abilities, which are uh, abilities that trigger uh, typically when an enemy attacks you, although there are other triggering conditions, like you can see counter attack here, counter attack with a tackle, triggers when an enemy f does a physical attack on you. So that's reaction skills. Uh, you've got your support skills, which are basically just passives, uh, just, th just things that benefit you and are always on. JP boost being the obvious example, increase the amount of JP earned in a battle. Or there's stuff that, uh, like equip axes, equip axes regardless of job. Fantastic one there. <laughs> Axes are like one of the worst weapons in the game. And oh yeah, defend is a weird one. That actually gives you an extra, like an extra th action, an extra command you can do in battle, but it doesn't uh, take up an action slot, which is good, or an action ability slot. And then you've got your movement abilities, which basically just improve your movement capabilities. Move plus one increases your move stat by one. Simplest one in the game. And you've got a slot for one of each of those. So basically you've got your one slot that's always taken up by the action ability of your current class. So here it's aim, which let's just use the archer's aim skills here, or I think it was called charge in the original game. And you can equip and your, yeah, your other slots don't have to match your job, typically. So you can equip reaction abilities, support ski or reaction skills, support skills, movement skills from any other job you want. But for this challenge, uh, we're going to be stipulate that you can only use skills from within your class once the characters have made it to the classes we want them in. So what can Beef do as an archer? Uh, he's got the aim ability here, which is... Uh, I, I, th I actually like the original uh, charge name for this skill, actually, just because it's a bit more descriptive. Aim is basically a charged attack. Uh, it'll... Uh, ba basically, it, it adds a bit of a delay to your attacks, but uh, increases their strength at the same time. The higher the aim... Basically, yeah, the higher the plus of the ability, the, the longer it takes a charge, but the more damage it does. Um, weirdly enough, the... Like, you can see it costs like a thousand JP to unlock the the highest charge attack here. Uh, the higher ones are actually borderline useless. Enemies will almost always be able to move out of the way because the because your aim when you aim an attack it doesn't target the enemy that you pick. It targets the panel. So if the enemy gets a turn and moves 
away from the panel you target, that attack is just going to miss completely. And so for that reason, the higher aim abilities are almost completely useless. Um, unless you couple them with uh, ways to debil debilitate the enemy's speed, like if you have uh, like speed break out of the knight class, or the uh, one of the dancer's skills can lower enemy speed. That can set them up for a big aim attack, but in general, the lower aims are actually the better ones, and they're the cheaper ones in the first place, so... I'm probably not even going to bother learning these, like, ever, until the very, very end of the game when we've got nothing better to spend our JP on. Because, yeah, we don't have any way to lower the enemy's speed with our party, with our jobs we've selected. Anyways, uh, reaction skills, not great options here. You've got Adrenaline Rush, which increases speed, which is actually really good. Uh, or at least increasing speed in general is super good. Speed is key, key in this game. If you ab Abilities that can increase or lower characters' speed is just uh, g generally phenomenal. <laughs> but uh, problem here is it's a reaction ability, which means we have to put beef... Bit, bit, and it, tr it triggers on HP loss, which is actually decent. So rather than triggering on physical attack, uh, this will trigger if a spell hits us as well. So that's kind of nice. Problem is, is that archers are kind of fragile, so they can't... Uh, they can't take too many attacks anyways, so it's it's a good skill, but not really for this class. I think that, uh, and in fact, Adrena yeah, uh, Adrenaline Rush is a good one for like a tankier kind of class, like if you stick that out on a knight or something. Although even then, in general, it's just one of the weaker uh, count, uh, reaction abilities. There are better ones out there, but it's probably the best one we've got. Or we got this one, Dodge Arrow and Bolt Attacks, which are fine, but arrow and arrow and bolt attacks are generally not that strong in the first place. So, yeah, generally not that helpful. And in fact, yeah, considering the low damage that uh, bows tend to do, I'd, I'd rather, if I'm taking a low damage hit, I would rather increase my speed off of that than uh, just avoid it entirely. So we'll probably end up going for adrenaline rush for our reaction ability here. Uh, equip cross crossbows basically lets you equip crossbows in other in classes other than archer, so you can put this on as your support ability, and that'll let you use crossbows as like a knight or something. Uh, completely useless here since we are not going to be changing our job. You've got concentration, which is one of the better support abilities in the game, I think. Unfor so basically, basically, yeah, your attacks have 100% success rates always. I think it even increases the success rate of like uh, like stuff like blind shot and uh, and like the break abilities in the knight class and stuff. I think it works on those. So yeah, phenomenal support ability, uh, or not phenomenal, but a pretty good support ability when combined with better classes that can be make better use of it. Uh, like I said, archers are not exactly the best at dealing damage, so their hits. Their attacks aren't that significant, so you don't tend to care a lot if they hit or miss a lot of the time. Nevertheless, it will increase uh, Beef's DPS, so that's good. And then we've got Jump plus one. Basically, uh, yeah, it makes him be able to jump up. Uh, yeah, ba basically the jump uh, determines uh, the highest uh, vertical distance that your character can move up without costing anything. So, like, basically this guy can jump up blocks up to three height which is actually does it's uh, jump is underrated a little bit uh by by players of this game i think in general overrated i'd say by the game itself i think the jump abilities are generally overpriced and overcosted. but uh nevertheless this will help them this will help them get to places that any en other enemies might not be able to so it might be able to might allow us to set ourselves up on a perch on certain maps and basically just ping enemies with impunity, which will be good. But in general, Archer, overall, probably one of the weaker classes, if not the weakest class in the game, I would say. They aren't capable of much, really. They have some pretty good skills that... or some pretty decent skills, I'd say, that are generally better used on better classes. Like, I, I like putting Concentration on Knights. Yeah, Concentration is a good skill for, like, Knights and, uh... I don't know. I, I don't know what other class is, because there's generally even better support skills you can use than Concentration, but I remember, I remember my first time through the game, I stuck Concentration in all my knights, and that worked out really well for me. So, yeah, that's the Archer. 
Uh, chemist. This is basically the item using class. Uh, yeah, all, you got all your items here. You need to spend JP to unlock them. Uh, nobody's going to be spending too much time in Chemist, so we're basically just going to have everyone learn Potion and Phoenix down, and that's it. Uh, am I going to... Or I guess he doesn't know any other Squire abilities, so there's no sense giving him a subclass or a, another action ability slot here. So, yeah, he's probably fine the way he is there. Uh, oh, yeah, Ke yeah, I guess that's the other thing. So, Chemists have the ability to throw items. I think they can... Uh, yeah, th or not throw, like, you know, like ninjas throw items in other Final Fantasy games. And, like, throw them at the enemies to damage them. The these guys, like, throw recovery items at allies, which is actually uh, super useful. And actually, the item... Uh, yeah, the item skill set here is actually really powerful in general. Like I said, I typically like to have, like, all of my characters having items in their second ability slot here in the early parts of the game. Just because it's... Uh, Healing is so beneficial, it lets you uh, get those fast JPs as well. It's also one of the only ways to revive characters in the game. So yeah, I, chemists are actually a really strong class in general, despite being like one of your starting two. Uh, in fact, yeah, uh, I, yeah, on my, yeah, like I said, I, I rolled a chemist on my sort of test run of the four job fiesta, and I, I'm not going to go into detail on any of the other abilities here since we're not going to be staying in chemist long but uh yeah it's a strong class later on in the game uh they get to use guns which even makes them like decent damage dealers as well yeah chemist is a really strong class it's not great if it's like your only class like the chemist uh single class challenge is quite difficult but uh as a support class it's actually one of the best ones out there in my opinion i actually like chemists better than priests for example when it comes to healing and support. Anyways, we spent a long time on that. So yeah, I, t I talked in the previous video about how monsters are some of the toughest enemies out there in the early parts of the game. And so yeah, with that said, uh, this battle could be a bit... Oh yeah, we've... Oh god. <laughs> okay, so our chemists are actually probably going to be on the front lines here. They've got mithril knives, so... I think, yeah, four weapon power, three... Oh god, even this guy's physical attack strength is garbage. Yeah, this guy's like not even better than a woman when it comes to attack strength. So yeah, it actually looks like our archers are going to be our main damage dealers here. So yeah, uh, nevertheless, this should be a pretty easy battle. And in fact, since archers are our main guys, that uh, so yeah, basically the... Th the thing with this battle, as you'll see in a minute, is this is an all-monster fight, and there's a pretty big number of them as well. I think it's I think it's like six on six. Like, yeah, I've got four party members, two guests, versus I think six monsters in this fight. One, two, three, four, five. I think there's a Lynx hiding there somewhere as well. Behind that tree, maybe? Oh no, he's right there. Yeah, I guess it is only five enemies. Nevertheless, uh, they are pretty strong, and they have some pretty good abilities. That Black Goblin has Spin Punch, so he's really dangerous if you surround him. Uh, the bomb there can explode, just like the other Final Fantasy games, so if you get him down... Basically, you got to take out the bomb in one go. If you get him to critical HP and don't finish him off, he'll just explode and possibly one-shot, like your entire party, if you've got him surrounded. So that's terrible. Uh, I think I want Brisket here... And yeah, apart from... And yeah, these guys are just the same guys we saw before. Pretty much the weakest monsters in the game, just about. But uh, these bombs and this black goblin can be some trouble. And they can all counter-attack as well, which is, again, it comes into play here, where if you get unlucky on the RNG... Uh, you know what, I think... I think we're gonna try to stick over to this side. Uh, we're gonna actually move him up a little bit, just to try and bait the monsters forward, I think. But until then... We can actually have our archers taking pot shots. Oh no, I, I, I should... Yeah, I need to plan this out. So we need to move forward two spaces. Really? Only four... Only four range on the crossbows. I thought it was better than that. Or I guess... I think it's the long bows that have uh, five range. And actually, Delita's going to get a turn before me here, so... 
Yeah, he'll be able to jump in front and tank the damage after this. Ah, shit. See, yeah, if I were a melee attacker, that would be like a miss and a probable counterattack, so... This, this battle could go badly, though. We, we have some pretty weak... Oh, right. Yeah, that was... Especially if I make stupid tactical, er tactical errors like that. That was a stupid place to put my archers. Thankfully, we've got chemists, so... Yeah, I guess, yeah, with the chemists in tow, this shouldn't be a very difficult fight. We can spam healing, although we can't, actually, because uh, we don't have a lot of potions right now. I think I have, like, five potions. So... Yeah, not a lot going as for us this fight. We've got sustainability, at least. Our chemists will be able to keep us alive, hopefully. As long as we don't, yeah, recklessly suicide ourselves. Even our guests are playing kind of smart here. Oh, you fucking asshole. Oh, God, he might have doomed us here. Okay, no, good. It's, it's going to be a while till he gets his turn. Nevertheless... Or, actually, yeah, Sirloin here gets the next turn, so... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna have her... Yeah, none of these guys has any damage on them, so I think I'm just gonna... Oh, we got seven potions, and... Oh, three Phoenix Downs? Yeah, this is gonna be a cakewalk. Nothing to worry about here. And, yeah, I'm gonna need to get Sirloin here to finish that guy off. Okay, that's good. And yeah, that corpse blocking is a thing in this game, too. Like, yeah, enemy... Yeah, basically, you can't... You can't occupy the same space as a corpse. So if, if you get... Like, if the enemies die on the right spaces, you can, like, kind of create, like, a little wall of corpses around yourself where the enemies just can't get at you. Uh, if, yeah, I think... Yeah, I want to keep the archers in the back. I think... Oh, right, four range. God damn it fucking this up already. And yeah, he's at 90 CT, so I can't afford to charge there. But yeah, you can see she's got a... Yeah, we can see a T-Bone here has a nice little corpse wall around her, so she can just, just sit there. That's the nice thing about archers, since you don't really need to move a lot to get them into position to attack stuff. They can just, like, just sit there and not move at all if you get them on a nice sniping perch. And again, because they aren't moving, they're getting uh, they're getting reset to 20 CT all the time, so they're getting more frequent turns. They're actually like like when I when I said earlier that you know archers are you know, maybe the weakest class in the game, that they're not terrible. Like all of the classes in the game are pretty strong. Like it's like it's possible to do a one CC for pretty much a, or a single class challenge for pretty much every class in the game. Like, all, all, yeah, all of the classes are strong enough that you can do that. Uh, tactically, this would be the right move, but yeah, fuck Argath. Or frankly, fuck Delita, too, based on what he does later on in the game. But for now, he's our friend, at least. Actually, Argath hasn't... story In terms of the story, Argath hasn't done anything to piss us off yet, either. But that, that'll change in relatively short order, I think. Yeah, he's gonna get the kill on this regardless. Probably should have kept these guys with broadswords, actually. And just, uh... Oh, I'm really tempted to move him up. Really tempted to move him up and get that attack there. Just for the JP. He's only got 51 health, though. No, I'm just gonna... Yeah, if I, yeah, if I want JP, I can just have him use an item. God, everyone's still level one. This next, the next story fight after this is gonna be a freaking pain in the ass for sure. There we go. I was afraid for a second that he still might not be in range. Ooh, you know what? I think I might be able to aim this guy. Oh yeah, that's gonna. Serious? Fifteen versus. Nine. Oh yeah, that's a big improvement. I was like, 15? Seriously? But yeah. Must be bad compatibil compatibility. Oh yeah, these goblins only have three movement too, so yeah. Archers are really effective against them. We're gonna get another volley off before they get in. And actually, yeah, Delita and Argath are probably gonna... Oh, never mind. 
Never mind, here they come. Actually, this is this is perfect, actually. She's gonna be able to get into position. Get some JPs. I actually want to avoid getting uh, too much more... Uh, too many more levels in JP on uh, Beef here, just because he's the one who needs it the least. I'm actually gonna go heal her, just because she needs it a little bit more, and I like the JP. We're actually really tight on money here, so if we are going to have... You know what, we're probably not going to have a chemist for Dorter, which is a shame. I'm actually tempted to keep these guys in the chemist class just for the next story fight, which is a bit of a doozy. But, uh, eh, we'll see. I'm pretty sure that both of them are going to get their job level. In fact, I think I'm just going to have... Yeah, I'm just going to have beef weight. I want my other characters to get the JP. That would be a great spot for a corpse. Yeah. Okay, so we finally got one character at level 2. God, my guests are leveling up faster than my main party characters. This is disgraceful. It's because they've got the highest deep they've got the highest damage right now, so they're getting more than their share of kills. Yeah, I think you get double experience for a killing blow as opposed to a regular attack, so it is it does matter who lands these final hits on the enemies. And I get yeah, I guess Brisket is just gonna go ham on everything, just be shanking fools left and right with this Mithril dagger. Just because that's apparently what she does. God damn it, I Okay. I think we're gonna start beating on our own guys here for JP. Just to prolong the fight. Yeah, in fact, yeah, I might want to save these potions for the next fight. I think what we're actually gonna do. Is just attack our own guys. God damn you, beef! Fucking prick. Doesn't want anyone else to have their share of the glory. Or is everyone level two? I think everyone's level two now. Okay, but yeah. Beef's a higher level two than everyone else. There's actually other reasons to keep uh, to keep your main character low leveled as well. Uh, the level of the enemies in random fights is uh, based on Ramza's level. So if he pulls away from the other from the rest of your party too too much, uh, you're going to have some really difficult random battles on your hands, potentially. And in these early parts of the game, uh, every level counts quite a bit, so even a single level difference can be the, be the difference between, like, an easy random battle and, like, a really, really tough one. Okay, and so with that guy done... Okay, now we need to burst this guy down before he gets the chance to blow up. What's his speed? It might actually be worthwhile. Speed 6 versus speed 5. So actually, if I get her to just wait here... Ah, fuck. Ah, fuck. See, that's the kind of shit I was talking about. So yeah, she's gonna reset to 20 t CT. And this guy's at 30. But since I've got one higher speed, I think she'll actually get a turn before he does. doesn't really matter. I'm pretty sure he's gonna get killed by Delita and Dargath before she gets another turn anyways, but... Oh, wow, I'm surprised that actually, uh... Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm gonna forget the names. I think it's... This is... Brisket. Yeah, Brisket. Thought she'd be in the way there. I guess the elevation helped us. Yeah, and then Argath's gonna come in and clean up. Oh, wow, yeah, Argath taking the lead here. He's our highest leveled character right now. It's actually, that's actually not a terrible thing. Like I said, we've got, we've got like, no, like, tanks or anything. Like, we've got no good physical classes, no tanks, no heavy damage dealers, no one to, no one to stand on the front lines and protect our, our archers. Oh, yeah, we're, as, as a reminder, final party is going to be Archer Thief, Oracle, Bard. All of them super squishy. I think the Oracle, or no, the Archer is probably our our uh, tankiest character. That's why I had uh, Beef take that role. And did he, I don't think he gained hardly any JP. Yeah, that's not going to be enough to learn anything. Sirloin. Oh, wow, he did not gain a job level off that last fight, so he's going to stick in Chemist for a little bit longer. 
That's fine. Uh, Brisket, on the other hand, is going to be well on her way after this. Or, in fact, yeah, next step towards Oracle is White Mage. So, actually, yeah, we're going to have a couple of sources of healing for this next battle, potentially, which could be a good thing. Could be a bad thing, though. Yeah, I think we're really going to have to actually gear up uh, Algus and Argath for the next fight, which is a little bit scary. Like, resting everything on their shoulders in terms of protecting the party. Oh yeah, and she needs some skills. Okay, so yeah, White Mage here. Probably doesn't need too much explanation. They cast healing magic. Oh wow. I thought that these guys typically started with enough JP to learn uh, Shell uh, or Protect as well. They're 10 short. That's a shame. But yeah, not going to be in too many of these classes for very long. Like I said, you can typically get a job level like in one, the early job levels, you can get in like one battle, two tops. So she's not going to be in White Mage very long. And yeah, T-Bone, second character to land in their final class. So yeah, we're going to do that right now. Okay, so we've uh, finished, finished getting all the job levels for T-Bone the Thief. Uh, Thief is an interesting class. Um, also, probably one of the weaker solo, like, one of the weaker just classes overall in the game. And again, just like Archer, it's got some pretty good abilities, but uh, the class in itself doesn't do... Like, it's got some good skills, but, like, its its equipment set isn't very good. It's got good built-in evasion, I guess, which is nice for dealing with physical attackers, but it's got low HP, can't equip heavy armor or shields or anything like that, which means they're extremely susceptible to magic. Yeah, basically... Not even a glass cannon release, because they have shit damage output, also. A good set of skills, though. Or a couple of decent skills, at least. Uh, so yeah, on the action abilities, a bunch of steel stuff. Uh, the, the highlight skill here is actually Steelheart. Probably their best, uh, their best ability overall. Uh, lets you charm an enemy. And it basically, yeah, converts them to your side, temporarily. Which can be extremely good, or actually, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, really, really good, actually, because later on in the game, you get to battles where, like, the enemy characters are stronger than your characters, so having one of them on your side is a huge benefit. And yeah, f uh, single class challenge thieves are pretty funny <laughs> for that reason, just as you've got them just, like, converting enemies left and right. Uh, and yeah, Steelheart only works on monsters and humans of the opposite gender as your character. And it also, it also, its success rate is based on your magic, magic attack. Uh, so for both those reasons, uh, female thieves are generally better overall. I don't know why I backed out there. And then yeah, you can steal enemies' equipment, uh, which is good in general. Like, it's good overall, because... It lets, you, it lets you steal some really good, like, rare and unique equipment from certain enemies. Like, yeah, there's some equipment that you just can't get from shops or just in any way other than stealing it from certain enemies. Problem is, is that all of that super good unique equipment is for classes that we can't use. So we're not going to be able to use, like, all of the rare swords and shields and armor and stuff that you can only get by stealing later in the game because none of our guys can equip that stuff. Or I, I think there's a bow we can get later on in the game that'll be handy. But in general, uh, yeah, these steel equipment stuff are certainly not a, a priority in the early game. Oh yeah, another thing that they're good for. It's actually good for damage, weirdly enough, because the way armor and equipment works in this game is it's rather than equipping, like rather than increasing like your defense stat, armor actually increases your hit points in this game. So when you steal an enemy's armor, you're actually reducing their maximum HP which is potentially an excellent source of damage, actually. Like, the early game, not so much, because your equipment gets you... Like, what does a piece of equipment get you at this stage in the game? Like, yeah, if, if, if I steal someone's armor, they're going to be, like, minus 10 HP, which is, like, nothing, even at this point in the game. Later on in the game, though, once you get, like, the really strong pieces of armor on the enemy, like, stealing an enemy's armor is going to reduce their HP by, like, as much as, like, a third or a quarter. 
And then, of course, you've got shit damage after that, but still, it's a nice, good, upfront, sort of quasi-damage dealing ability to reduce enemies' maximum HP. So it's good for that. Shields can be annoying, too. It's good to get those off. Yeah, the later shields are a bitch to get around. Shields increase your evasion. And, yeah, later, later on in the game, any enemy with a shield is, like, basically untouchable, unless you hit him from behind. So that's that. Uh, reaction abilities... Oh yeah, this is basically auto defense. Like you've got the squire skill defend, uh, which ba yeah, basically you can spend an action to go into a defensive posture, which is you know just like regular RPG defend. I think it halves physical damage, maybe magic damage too. I'm not sure. And yeah, vigilance makes it so that uh, anytime you lose HP, you automatically go into a defensive stance. Uh, Gill snapper gets you money. Uh, pretty shitty. Like, we're low on money now, but in general, money is not a problem at all in this game. So, yeah, not a great ability. Sticky fingers, catch catch thrown items. Uh, basically entirely useless unless you're up against ninjas. Ninjas are the only enemies in the game who can throw items at you. And there's not a lot of battles where you get ninjas, so, yeah. Basically, vig Vigilance is probably going to be the way we to go here for most of the game. We might switch into Sticky Fingers. Although even then, like, ninjas are going to be throwing, like, shurikens and stuff at you, so we can't use those anyway. So yeah, probably Vigilance for the entire game. Poach here is a really good passive ability. Basically, anytime... I think, yeah, if, if you're... If a, if a character with Poach equipped uh, lands the killing blow on a monster, uh, they can poach that monster to get unique equipment and... It, it's, and some of the stuff they can get is really good, especially later on. And uh, there's some unique items and equipment that you can only get by poaching. So that's going to be really, really good later on in the game. It's also going to save, save us some money as we go throughout the game, since we're going to be able to get some uh, key pieces of, of, of equipment for our characters uh, by poaching, as opposed to buying it. And even then, we're going to poach some stuff that we can't equip, so we can just sell it. It's, it's a really good ability. Actually, again, not one of the best in the game or anything, but it's it's solid. This is definitely a benefit to the party. And then we got, uh, yeah, move plus two and jump plus two. And of the two, move plus two is obviously the way to go. Move, just yeah, anything that's plus movement in this game is like phenomenal. It's almost as good as plus speed, in my opinion. It would be it would be great if we could put this on our archers, actually, since they would be able to just kite the enemies with impunity. But, alas, uh, the, because of the way I've stipulated, if we, if we were doing like a traditional four-job fiesta where the characters can equip skills freely between the four different classes, but alas. And actually, yeah, thieves. So yeah, this is a, a phenomenal ability in general, but not really that great for thieves since, like, I guess it gives them mobility to get into position to attack, but they're not very good frontline attackers Anyways, it kind of helps you kite the enemies with Steel Heart. Like, mainly we don't want our... Th we want to avoid having our Thief attack in general. We generally want to be using Steel Heart at every opportunity. And even when everyone's had their heart stolen, we probably just want to use it anyways, just to refresh the duration. Overall, Thief... Again, an example of a class with very solid abilities overall, but, uh... Abilities that are generally best used with, with other stronger classes, with better defense and uh, better can, that can equip better items and all that stuff. Although I guess the other the two benefits that the thief does have innately, like the benefits you get from being a thief as opposed to any other class, is uh, thieves have very good speed growth. So yeah, T Bone is going to be getting a lot of extra turns by the end end of the game, which could potentially be. Uh, really, really good. I'm losing my voice here, I think. Oh yeah, we're up, almost up on time anyways. I think we're almost coming to the end of this video. Anyways, uh, uh, very good speed growth and speed in general. And I forget the other thing. There were two things. Good evasion, which uh, actually makes her not the worst physical attacker, actually. Although with that said, she's still going to have much, much worse evasion than a knight or any other class who can equip a shield. So... Yeah, thieves in general aren't really good for much of anything other than stealing equipment in the late, late game and stealing hearts in general. And so, yeah, two kind of mediocre to 
or cer certainly be below average classes to start off with. Nevertheless, like I said, they do have their benefits, and we're going to see if we can, yeah, milk those benefits to the fullest, because if not, uh, this is going to be a bitch of a run. And uh, that's going <laughs> to... And with that said, uh, I guess we've got the Dorder Trade City fight uh, coming up as sort of a proving grounds. We've got half our, half our party where we want them right now, so... Uh, yeah, so th this... Or, but we'll start into that in the next video. Um, yeah, we're going to cut it here. And uh, yeah, next time, I don't know, we might... Uh, I think we, we need to go back to town to get some items, I think, for our new classes. If we get a random battle in the Swiggy Woods slash Siege Wield, that is that must be like Old English for wood or something. Anyways, so we're going to go back to town, buy some stuff, and if we get a random battle... On the way back to Dorder, we're gonna take it. But uh, yeah, that's the plan for the next video, which will be uh, in the next video. Until then, uh, take care, and I'll see y'all next time. I guess we've got the 